Hi everyone. Today I'm going to walk you through how to build out an assignment as well as tests and pools. The first thing that we're going to look at is an assignment um, and then we'll look at all the options um, for your tests and your pools and your deployment for your tests. So before we get started building an assignment, I would like to show you what an actual completed assignment looks like. So you do have to have a content area on your course menu over here on the left hand side. Uh, and to do that, you may already have one. Yours may be called units, modules, chapters, lessons, content area. It could be named anything depending on your college. But if you don't have one and you need a content area, all you have to do is go up to the plus sign above your course menu uh, and create the first thing there on your list, which is a content area. And this is just a place to hold your content. Since I already have one, I'm going to show you what the completed assignment looks like. And down here on the bottom, you can see I have a sample assignment. And on that sample assignment, uh, I've given my students an attached resource, so an attached file. I've given them some instructions, as well as a little image to show them what they need to look for when submitting their assignment and how they should be submitting it. So let's look and see uh, how we could build this out. I'm going to go to my lessons area, which doesn't have an assignment. And the first thing you want to look at is under assessments. So assignment is actually listed under assessments. And it's the third option down. And we're going to create an assignment. And I already have one assignment created, so I'm going to call this one assignment 2. And again, I can include some instructions in this area, and I'm actually going to include the same instructions that I had before. And you can also attach images. So remember, this is the content editor, and you're in the content editor box. And with this, you could include videos, you can include images, you can attach files, you can format the text however you need to format it. You may want to bold some things, so for this instance, I'll bold this area down here uh, that gives them some instructions for attaching their document. Now, I already have an image in my course, so I'm going to add that here so that they'll understand where, when they submit their assignment, uh, where they should click to add the document. So I'm going to go to my content collection. I'm going to browse my course. And under um, my screenshot here, I'm going to submit that. And it's a little large. So I may go ahead and go under the appearance here and shrink it down by just a little bit. And I'm going to insert it. So now you can see my image down here below. When you insert images, one thing I do want to point out is under uh, image description. You may want to add a description here for ADA purposes, which I did not. So I'm going to go back here and include that. And I will call this assignment submission image and I'm going to update that and then you won't get that error message. Now that I have my assignment, notice how short uh, the content editor is here. Again, if you need to, down here on the bottom right hand corner of the content editor, you can actually grab those little bars and expand that out if you're doing some additional formatting. That may help you um, see everything uh, at a glance. So if you start having a lot of text or your images are a little larger, you can always expand that content editor and that uh, works for anywhere that you see the content editor. So again, I could attach some assignment files down here below the content editor. You could also attach assignment files using the paper clip uh, inside the content editor. That's also an option. The assignment files down below um, just attaches them in a different place. They're not actually inside of the content editor. They show up um, above, uh, above your, your area. So I'm going to browse my course so you can actually see where this shows up. And I'm going to grab a couple uh, or at least one or two files um, that I may need. Some of my smaller files here. We'll do chapter 11 and chapter 2. And I'm going to submit those. So then I have a couple of assignments down here. Now this is actually on Lighthouses, so I'm going to change this to Lighthouse Resource. And then my chapter 2 PDF, I'm going to call this Lighthouse reference, just so you can see what happens. So the link title is going to change. If a student downloads the document, of course the file name will be 
um, whatever your original file name was. But for the link title, what shows up on the assignment, you can actually change that. If you wanted to add any alignments, we do have all of the standards from KMS imported into Blackboard. So if you wanted to add an alignment, you could do so here. You would just click that alignment button and then you'd find your program uh, in your course and choose, um, choose your alignment and your, your standards or outcomes um, that you're looking for. If you mess up and you need to unattach one of those files, you can just hit do not attach on the far right hand side. Due dates is the next item on the list. And so due dates for assignments are actually just suggestions. If you notice, submissions are accepted after this date, but are marked late. So even if you put a due date on here, which we would strongly encourage you to do because it will automatically populate this item to the calendar for you, for your students to have access to, and you don't have to do anything extra for that to happen. Um, you just check this due date box uh, and it will automatically populate a time for uh, the current date and time. So I'm gonna change this to be, we'll say next Friday. And I'm actually gonna change the time that it's due to end of day. Notice that uh, there is a midnight option here and midnight actually means 12.01 a.m. Whenever you want an assignment to be turned in at the end of the day, just choose end of day and it will populate 11.59 p.m. for you. When a student is, submits an assignment and it is after this due date, um, in your uh, grading area, there will be a little, a little icon, it's a little flag icon, uh, and it's, it's late. So there's, it just marks it late for you so that if a student does actually turn something in after your due date, uh, if you don't accept late work, you know, you could adjust accordingly. Uh, and if you do, then you would automatically know that assignment has been submitted after your required due date. Grading is the next item on the list, and if you see any areas that have this little orange asterisk on it, um, that is a required field. So you do have to put something in this field. So uh, if you're a, a, um, a percentage-based grade book, a lot of your assignments will most likely be based on 100% or 100 points. Uh, so I'm going to choose 100 for this. You may also see a tool option here to add or create a rubric. So if I had a rubric associated with this, I could select a rubric that I already have. I could actually create a new rubric or I could create a new rubric from one of my previous existing rubrics. If you do not see this add rubric option, that means the tool is turned off inside of your customizations area. So to turn this on, I'm gonna show you that real quick. To turn that rubric tool on, if you don't see it, it's over here underneath the course management area under customization and then tool availability. And you'll just scroll through their alphabetical, look for the R's and you can check the rubric option there and then it will show up for you. The next three items down here are your submission details, your grading options, and how your grades are displayed. So the first one for your submission details uh, lets you decide if this assignment will be an individual submission, which most of them probably are, or it could be a group submission. Okay, so you have the option to choose that here. You also get to decide how many attempts your students are going to get. You could use a single attempt, multiple attempts, or an unlimited attempt. Some instructors like to use multiple attempts and choose an option of two. So if your students submit an assignment first and then they decide they submitted the wrong file, um, then you, they, you would automatically give them a second attempt to upload that file. The next option uh, is the plagiarism uh, safe assign tool. So if this is uh, something that you are going to want students to submit to safe assign um, to check for plagiarism, then this is an option as well. If you check this box here, then the two boxes down below gives you some additional options for allowing students to view the originality report uh, for each of their attempts. And or you could exclude the submissions from the institutional and global references databases. So that's entirely up to you. For this assignment, I'm not going to do a safe assign, but if you want to, you can check that. The next option is your grading options, and you do have to click on these titles in order to get the drop down. So the next two is enable anonymous grading and enable delegated grading. So anonymous grading actually hides the student names um, on the grade area where you're actually grading them. 
One thing to keep in mind though, if you're using this, if a student submits a paper and their name is on the inside of the document, then it's not really hidden. So unless your students are, are truly turning in their papers um, with their name not in the file name uh, or their name not on the inside of the document, which for us I think is pretty rare, but it, it, you could do that uh, if you wanted to. So Enable Delegated Grading uh, gives you the option to assign grading responsibilities uh, to one or more people. So if you needed to enable delegated grading, that's, that's the tool that you would use here. You would check that box. The next one down here is display of grades. So how are your grades going to be displayed for both your students and yourself? The first option here is your primary grade, and your primary grade is the grade that shows in the Grade Center, as well as the grade that shows uh, for your students. So for primary, the majority of our instructors are probably on a percentage-based grade book. Uh, so you would, instead of choosing score, you would use percentage. And then a lot of people like to choose a secondary option. Now notice the secondary option is displayed in the grade sitter only, which means your students don't see the score, um, only you see the score, but it's very convenient because if I have percentage as my primary, for my secondary, I can choose letter. So that in my grade center, I can scroll through a particular assignment and vertically it would say each cell would have a grade such as 80%, and then in parentheses on the right hand side, uh, it would have the letter B in parentheses. So that's very convenient for you to see just at a glance um, how many of your students have A's, B's, C's, uh, D's, or F's. The next option is checked for you by default, which is to include in Grade Center calculations. For this assignment, we do want to include it. It is a, a real assignment for my course. If you have a practice assignment or if you have drafts that you're letting your students turn in, you may or may not want to include the Grade Center uh, in the grading calculations. It may not be part of the grade. So this part is entirely up to you. I would say the majority of instructors are probably going to leave this checked. Okay, and the next one is do you want to show the grade to the students in their My Grades section? Most of you probably do. There may be an occasional instance uh, where you don't want to show it to them just yet. So you could always check this uh, on or off. The last option down here is to show the statistics to the students in their My Grades area. And this is actually off by default. So if you turn this on, one thing to consider is that depending on how much of the class you have graded, if you're not, if you haven't completed um, grading everything, their statistics uh, in the class could change. So if you're grading mid, you could turn this on at the very end, uh, and that might, that might work for you. So after you've graded everything, uh, you, should, you could show the statistics to the students. But you may not want to turn that on mid-grading. The last item on the list down here is, is this assignment actually available? So by default, assignments are available, um, which means students have the option to submit something for them. But you can limit the availability. So this is, is a viewing option for students. So can students see the assignment, actually click on the assignment, and submit something to the assignment? So you could limit the availability. Uh, and again, if I check on that, check that box, it's going to create a current date and time. If you want to display it until, so if the assignment is only available for a set period of time, then I could turn this display off uh, until a certain time. I'm not going to turn that off for now, but if you have an assignment that is only available for a, a certain number of days or a certain week in the semester, then you can use these availability dates uh, to limit a student's viewing and submitting options. So one thing I want to do, uh, do want to point out is that if a, an assignment is available for students, which means they can see it. So if they can see the assignment, they also have the option to submit for that assignment. So if the assignment opens on Monday, uh, and, and, um, and that means students have all week. So as soon as it opens until it closes, a students can submit it. So if they can see it, they can submit their assignments. So keep that in mind when you're limiting these availability dates. The last option down here for an assignment is to track the number of views. If it's a really important assignment, like a midterm or a final exam uh, or an equivalent, then you may want to track the number of views. 
if it's one of 20 other assignments that you have your students complete, you may not want to track the number of views for that. And that's it for the assignment. Again, your submit buttons are normally at the bottom or at the top of your screen. So this one shows up at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. And you can see my assignment down here shows up at the very bottom. So you can see here I have named my assignment assignment two. One thing that I do want to mention when you're naming your assignments, your gradable items, you want to make sure that there's no punctuation in the title. So you wouldn't put assignment number or pound symbol two or assignment two comma chapter four. Another thing to keep in mind is that when your students submit documents to these assignments, the four types of documents that the grader will actually show you, the inline grader, is a PDF file, an Excel file, a Word file, or a PowerPoint file. So all four of those file types your students can submit and you will be able to view them right inside of the grader. Now let's see what this looks like for a student. I'm going to go into student preview mode for a moment. And now I'm going to go back into and now you can see what my students would see. So your students are going to see your assignment, your attached files for that assignment, your instructions for the assignment, and any additional information that you put in that content editor. So you can see that my image shows up right here. When they click on this assignment, you'll get that same information with some additional information, which includes the due date and how many points it is. Now we did talk about the due date and you can see it shows up here. A lot of instructors um, do have a habit of putting the due date inside of the instructions. One thing that we really love about Blackboard is called the date manager. So with date management, what you can do is actually run your due dates and your availability dates uh, into the future when you when you are going from term to term so to adjust the due dates as long as you're using due dates and remember those populate to the calendar uh, and you're using availability dates you'll be able to adjust those a lot e easier um, when you need to update them for the following semester or term without having to go in and edit each individual piece of content so you can see i've given my students a little image here that says when they submit they need to use this browse my computer option Okay, and your students could also add comments to your items. And that concludes our video for today. Please check out our website at www.gvtc.org forward slash bblearn for additional videos, resources, and handouts.